How's everyone doing? It's a random bag of mystery. I've done these videos before and you guys seem to like them and they're fun to do. So if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these is your favorite. The bag is bustling at the seams right there. Uh, but yeah, there's 15 movies in here. And the uh, random bag of mystery, if you don't know what it is, I will go ahead and tell you. It's essentially uh, when I get a bag of movies that I had over at my parents' place uh, that I've been storing for years and years. Uh, I haven't lived at home in quite a while, uh, but occasionally my, uh, you know, my mom will bag stuff up for me and I'll uh, come and pick it up and uh, it's stuff that I haven't seen in sometimes, you know, five plus years. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is all of the movies now. I There might be like one or two uh, in a closet or somewhere in like a of one of the rooms but i'm pretty sure this is the majority of them now um so <laughs> most of these movies i haven't seen in like forever uh initially you know during different moves i'd stored stuff over there and my collection is pretty crazy you see the two bookcases here i've got 11 total bookcases stuff all over the floors um so uh it's interesting to see some of these movies that uh you know i haven't seen in so long and forgot that i even had uh, so it's nice to have them back at home in the collection where they belong uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. There's only one Blu-ray, but it's a good one. <laughs> First up is Tron Legacy. This is the ultimate Tron experience. It's a five disc set, includes Tron Legacy 3D, and then has the Tron original classic. Uh, this set, I remember for a while, was going for like, I don't know, 150 bucks or something like that. Um, so I think it's still extremely rare. And it's a, you know, five disc combo pack right here. And it still lights up. Look at that, how cool is that? So that was actually pretty shocking. I figure like maybe the batteries might corrode. That's something I've worried about. I have like sets, you know, that I've had for, you know, eight years or something longer with the batteries in them. I always worry if like the batteries will corrode or anything like that. But here you go. Uh, there's a little display uh, bottom piece too, but I think it's actually pretty cool that this still works. And then I like the practicality of the sets. I don't like the stack disc stuff. So there's all these different discs stacked right in there. You know, there's the 3D one, but and there's all the ones behind there too. Um, but I, I like when a set like this, you know, has the discs in there like that, and it's practical for the display. I don't like when it's multiple pieces, like the Jurassic Park set where it has, you know, dinosaurs and stuff like that, and you have uh, the, the case separate. I like it when it's included in there and doesn't take up as much space. Uh, I know a lot of people like those sets, but for me, I like something like this where it like fits in there like that. So uh, I remember seeing this one when it first came out and thinking it was, you know, a visually stunning movie and being a decent uh, film. Uh, but I'm going to revisit it. I'm looking forward to checking out that one and the original again. It's been a long time since I've seen uh, the original. And then I, again, last time I saw the Tron Legacy was when it came out. And that was quite a bit ago now. So uh, again, the visuals I thought were amazing. Um, so I remember liking a lot of the, the casting choices too that they did. Uh, you know, obviously uh, Jeff Bridges in uh, the original right here. Uh, but it was cool to see uh, some, you know, a, a different, and then the, the soundtrack too, I thought was really good, Daft Punk. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm a big fan of Olivia Wilde. So, and Garrett Hedlund, I think is actually a really good actor and underrated. Um, so yeah, Jeff Bridges uh, is, uh, is amazing. Uh, let me know what your favorite Jeff Bridges film is. I think he's done so many great things and I know he's going through uh, some health issues right now and that's in the news and stuff. So I, I'm wishing him the best for sure, but uh, the Ultimate Tron Experience. Yeah, I'm really shocked that the batteries still work in that. Next up are some VHS tapes. Yes, VHS tapes. I grew up in the uh, VHS store era, video rental store era, mom and pop stores. Uh, I say this every time I talk about it. Captain Home Video, Joe's Video, Easy Video. Those are the stores I remember going to. And then, you know, Hollywood Video Blockbuster, they took over all those stores. Although Easy Video and Joe's Video, I think were still around uh, for a bit. Uh, but then, um, you know, Blockbuster went out and that was the end. That was sadness right there. So no more uh, video rental stores on any format uh, in my area for at least seven years. Uh, I know there's still like family video. I think there's still like one Blockbuster in America. 
Uh, I hope it hangs on. I hope some of these places survive. I know there's a few different ones here and there, but it's definitely a rarity. Uh, but four VHS tapes, and I was actually really excited to see this one. Uh, I'm actually uh, loving this. The graphics are amazing too. This is apparently from Burger King. There was four different ones that they had. Sometimes I remember like Pizza Hut doing different DVDs uh, and things like that. But I remember the DVDs were in like the sleeves. I still have some of those, but this one is really cool. I love the, the blue and then the snowy setting. It is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Great Baldini. And I remember the uh, Family Home Entertainment line right there. They did a lot of like, you know, G.I. Joe's and I think maybe Transformers, but a lot of the cartoons and stuff. But there's four different uh, titles right here that they had. And uh, this is uh, a 25 minute episode. It looks like there was some uh, magician stealing a giant jewel and the turtles have to stop them. And I guess, you know, it go, uh, dives into a different dimension as well. But again, I like the snowy setting and the blue all around. So that looks pretty awesome. I'm probably going to put that somewhere on display. It's super nostalgia. Um, this is 1990. So yeah, 1990 right there. Pretty exciting. For, <laughs> uh, I like that. I don't know. I, the retro of it. Uh, I loved Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles growing up as a kid. Uh, I remember playing Turtles in Time, the arcade game. Uh, but the cartoon was amazing. Let me know who your favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle character is. Not just of the main uh, four right there, but any of the villains as well. And any of the other side heroes and stuff like that um but next up is uh richard scary's a golden book video uh storybooks brought to life three stories a uh, gingerbread man goldilocks and three bears and three little pigs uh does anybody else remember richard scary i loved richard scary back in the day as a little kid um so this is like a just kind of blows my mind to see this again uh but look at that you know what i'm gonna take this tape out too to see what uh see what it looks like oh it's just kind of a basic one right there but you know a little sticker for it but yeah i remember loving uh these uh i think there were some books too that i had for uh, richard scary and stuff but i uh, really enjoyed uh the style so definitely very uh nostalgic brings me back to my childhood uh this is from 1985 <laughs> Uh, next up is, here's another FHE, um, Family Home Entertainment release, and it's Frosty the Snowman, Christmas Classics. Look how clean that looks. That is kind of amazing. Um, but yeah, so it's a classic tale right there. Uh, it's kind of cool to see that again. This is one coming up, though, that I don't ever remember having, uh, and I don't remember seeing it. It's from uh, Canon Video, and uh, this does not have a DVD release. Uh, it's The Secret of the Ice Cave. Starring uh, Michael Morarty, who I always remember from uh, the stuff. He's been in a bunch of stuff. <laughs> uh, and Sally Kellerman from MASH. Uh, basically about this kid who uh, he's uh, going to uh, the jungles of Chile. Where his, I guess his mother is stationed. And he's he has this disc that has the locations to where this uh, Inca treasure or priceless blue diamonds. Blue ice diamonds are. Um, and then a bunch of people are trying to find it. International drug thugs want the map, a cartel, you know, and uh, mobsters and native tribes. So a bunch of different people looking for it. And uh, it looks like it's going to be, you know, a treasure action movie. Uh, and uh, I like the cast right here. I, mean, I don't ever remember seeing this one. So it's kind of like surprising. But got the please uh, uh, be kind rewind sticker. So I dig that. But I'm actually kind of excited to check this one out. Um, next up are the DVDs. Let's go ahead and take them all out of the bag. There we go. Uh, again, a lot of these ones don't have uh, Blu-ray release. Some of them do. Uh, in fact, I actually have the first one on Blu-ray. So if anybody wants to do a trade for this one, let me know. Uh, Romancing the Stone with Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. Let me know what your favorite Michael Douglas movie is, your favorite uh, Kathleen Turner movie. And it's directed by Robert Zemeckis, who's done so many amazing films. Let me know what your favorite uh, Robert Zemeckis film is. You know, he did uh, Forrest Gump, the Back to the Future uh, trilogy. Uh, tr he's done so many amazing films. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to choose with him. He also directed uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, uh, Castaway, uh, so many amazing films. But uh, this one actually had a sequel to Jewel of the Nile. And this is kind of a, you know, romance uh, action movie. Another uh, like um, treasure chase kind of movie uh and a bunch of different f i like the the chemistry a bunch of gags here and there comedic elements but uh i like their chemistry i thought that was a big selling point here uh you also have danny devito in here too uh but yeah i remember this one being a lot of fun her sister's kidnapped 
uh, and they're trying to uh, search for this jewel in the Colombian jungle. Uh, and uh, it, it, I just remember being super crazy. I remember always loving this artwork too for it. Uh, but it also has the Jewel of the Nile sequel. But I do have this on Blu-ray, so if anybody's interested in doing a trade for it, let me know. But yeah, Robert Zemeckis is such an amazing director. So many films. This was like one of his first um, like really popular movie, like Used Cars, uh, Romancing the Stone. This is like one of the few ones he didn't work with um, Steven Spielberg on too. Next up is Happy Accidents. And this is directed by Brad Anderson, who directed The Machinist. Uh, and Session uh, 9, which are two amazing films. Um, but yeah, I love The Heck of the Machines. That was one of the few films that like, I, there's pretty much like the only film I could think of where I, after I finished watching it, I was trying to figure it out. And that like never happens. And most movies are so predictable, so formulaic. I predicted some uh, twist just from the trailers. Um, so I don't know, that, it's a rarity to see something like that. And just Christian Bale's performance in uh, The Machinist was just amazing just the transformation um but love that film uh, and this one was a very different film somewhat unique though it's kind of like a rom-com but with a, a twist um Vincent D'Onofrio says that he is from the future uh from the year 2470 and uh he's there uh, travel back in time to save Marissa Tomei and Marissa Tomei has had some bad luck I guess with uh you know uh love in the past and people think essentially that he's crazy but uh you know they have the romance there um but Vincent D'Onofrio let me know your favorite Vincent D'Onofrio movie your favorite Marissa Tomei movie have both been in such amazing films do you think she deserved uh an Oscar though uh my cousin Vinny for that uh, performance let me know what you think <laughs> I think she's absolutely stunning to this day um but yeah really uh interesting film uh, i definitely want to revisit this one it's been a while since i've seen it i remember having mixed feelings on it overall but just the the director though i'm a big fan of what he's done he's very unique style creative ideas too uh next up is the preacher's wife um which is a remake of uh, uh i want to say uh bishop's wife is that what it was um i think so but this is directed by penny marshall who directed big uh, she was in Laverne and Shirley back in the day. She's done a lot of production work. Um, directed League of Their Own. Uh, but yeah, I remember really uh, enjoying this though. But it's been a long time since I've seen it. I think the big draw was for me, mostly for the characters, the actors themselves who are playing the characters, more so than the movie uh, itself. I just remember thinking it was uh, nothing really kind of stood out per se, except for the actors themselves. I really enjoyed seeing them in it. Uh, but that, I think that was the biggest thing. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a while. I'm looking forward to revisiting this one. Uh, Denzel Washington, uh, you know, he's been in so many amazing films. I feel like it would be hard to choose, uh, you know, a, a best film for him. But uh, let me know. Uh, Training Day, I feel like he's done so many great films. But Training Day definitely sticks out for me. Uh, but he's been in, like, Pelican Brief. I remember, like, back in the day, loving that one. Uh, Whitney Houston, you know, the bodyguard. Uh, great singer, tragic with what happened with her. Um, Denzel Washington's son, also a really good actor. Um, but yeah, uh, I remember uh, seeing this and looking forward to checking out again. Uh, there's a bunch of other recognizable people in here. Gregory Hines, trying to, um, Courtney B. Vance, um, some other people too, but um, scored by Hans Zimmer. And uh, again, Penny Marshall directed it. Definitely want to revisit that one. Uh, next up is Lucky 13. Uh, and this one I don't ever remember seeing. I'm pretty sure I picked up a blockbuster for like a couple bucks and then just never watched it. Uh, I feel like that was kind of the case. I got a lot of blockbuster movies for cheap, especially towards the end when they were going out of business. And then I didn't end up watching like most of them. Uh, uh, I ended up getting rid of a, a, like a ton of those ones that, I, you know, if they were just sitting for so long, there's no reason to keep them. I just have no room, uh, you know, thousands of, of movies. And that's the thing, it's a constant battle. Like I want to, realistically, how many movies can you rewatch in your life, you know? Uh, again, just, you just see the two right here, but I've got 11 tall, uh, or actually I got nine tall uh, and wide Billy bookcases from Ikea, but then I have two smaller length drawbridge bookcases, but then I also have piles all over the floor. And realistically, like each tall and wide Billy bookcase holds like 500 Blu-rays. Um, so, you know, how many do I need, you know? Uh, it's, it's hard though, I've sold so many movies over the past few years. Like I wanna say in the past five years, I've sold somewhere around like, 7,500 DVDs, so 7,500 DVDs, just take that in, and then probably around 4,000 Blu-rays, like, 
and I still have tons. I still have a good pile right there that I want to get rid of, but uh, I feel like I need to thin the collection down. I've just hit that impasse. Um, I haven't seen this one. I do like um, uh, Lauren Graham a lot. Uh, you also have Harlan Williams, who just look at how goofy he is. He was in the movie Rocket Man, uh, the Disney movie, not to be confused with the Elton John movie. That movie was so ridiculous. I revisited that one and instantly purged it from my collection. I bought it from uh, Disney Movie Club and uh, that was rough to sit through. Um, but, you know, he he's, you know, he plays the kind of same goofy role in everything that he's in. Um, I uh, recently watched Half Bake again, which I think still holds up. Best stoner comedy movie ever for me. I'll take that over Cheech and Chong. Uh, but he was great in that uh, role. But basically, this is a, a rom-com movie. Uh, this guy, you know, he's easy to break up with all of his exes. And then uh, his, you know, this girl that he has a big crush on is about to move away. So and that's the best friend. And so he's interviewing all his ex-girlfriends, all 12 of them. And to find out what went wrong and she could be lucky 13 kind of reminds me a bit of other movies um so even like high fidelity used a little bit of like interviewing the exes kind of thing um but i don't know i'm gonna give this one a chance and finally watch it i've seen a lot of like really grim depressing movies a lot of horror movies a lot of violent movies recently maybe let's uh you know lighten the mood a bit uh, I also, also, you know, it's Christmas just passed. I hope you guys all had a Merry Christmas. I watched a few Christmas movies too, but uh, some of them weren't that good. Um, so maybe this will be a fun, entertaining, lighthearted movie. I like the cast. Um, next up is America's Sweethearts. This one has a great cast. Uh, Julia Roberts, Billy Crystal, Catherine Zeta-Jones, John Cusack. Apparently they're a big Hollywood couple. John Cusack and Catherine Zeta-Jones, they break up. And then uh, I guess um, Julia Roberts is her assistant. And then... Billy Crystal is a veteran press agent. So they're trying to like get them back together, but I think they end up falling for each other uh, in the process. That's what it seems like. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I like the cast. I don't think I've really ever heard of this movie before, which is surprising given the cast. Um, but I'm gonna be checking this one out very soon as well. Another uh, rom-com. Uh, the cast is the big sell there. And that's the thing too, thinking about Preacher's Wife, I remember like thinking like the, the main, the, draw for this is the cast i remember liking the movie overall but thinking it was kind of like you know schmaltzy nothing really stood out but uh just seeing the cast together was the main thing that i enjoyed about it and i feel like you know i'm gonna revisit it though maybe it'll be better the second time around it's been a long time um but you know sometimes the, the cast is a big draw and that all we you know can't always save the movie though next up is cadillac man which i think this is another one i don't think i ever actually saw this one um i think i got it from blockbuster and just put it in a pile sometimes you know i i get movies in for a review sometimes too uh, i don't get everything uh but i also you know make some purchases here and there as well and sometimes things get backed up on your watch list so i think that's what happened there and then i had it over my parents place for storage and uh, kind of forgot it existed in my collection but uh robert williams and tim robbins uh i can't believe it's been so long now since robert williams has passed away i want to say like uh seven years now and it's just shocking to me it's been that just flies by uh, but he is a car salesman and he's also um, hooking up with a bunch of different girls uh, and he's got an ex-wife space cadet girlfriend and someone else's wife and I think Tim Robbins comes in and threatens to blow the place up with explosives for because he's looking for somebody who's doing his wife uh, that's what it says on here doing in uh, quotations uh, and apparently there's like a mob tie here and then he's having bad luck with his car business so a uh, friend dresher's in here there's a few other recognizable people um outside the the main two but uh looking forward to checking this one out the cast again a big draw let me know what your favorite robin williams movie is i really like fisher king i feel like that one doesn't get quite enough love um but um terry gilliam movie but tim robbins too let me know your favorite tim robbins movie let me know your favorite for all of these these actors um julia roberts billy crystal Catherine zeta jones john cusack let me know your favorites um, you know, obviously there, there's a lot of really popular ones, but then there's also, you know, lesser known ones. And I'm not a big rom-com fan, uh, but I really enjoyed Serendipity with John Cusack and I enjoy High Fidelity as well. Uh, he does a lot of, you know, those kind of films and I feel like more of like kind of dark comedic elements to a lot of them. Uh, obviously, remember everybody say anything, but he's done a ton of those ones back in the day and newer ones too. But Serendipity was like one of my all time favorites. High Fidelity too would be on that list. Uh, next up is Joe Dirt. Um, the sequel for this, one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Usually when somebody says that, I think it's hyperbole. I usually 
say, you know, you haven't seen enough movies if you think that. Because I've watched so many terrible low budget movies, found footage movies, found footage Bigfoot movies. Um, so I've seen just really horrendous movies that people probably never even heard of. Knock Knock 2, have you ever heard of that? And Skeleton Key 3, have you ever heard of that? Like, um, so many different movies. Clown Nato was a, a thing that exists and should not have. There's, there's so many. Uh, but the biggest two that I think were the worst movies from like Hollywood, mainstream, big budget movies were two sequels that came out pretty close together proximity wise. Uh, Joe Dirt 2 and Zoolander 2. Both of them had a lot of well-known famous people in it, but they were horrendous. Two of the worst movies I've ever seen. But the first Joe Dirt movie, I think, is a lot of fun. I remember seeing this in the movie theater, uh, and it was me and um, uh, my big brother in the fraternity, actually, my fraternity back in the day. And we were in there, and I think there was, like, two other people, maybe one or two other people in the whole movie theater, like, the night, you know, that premiered Friday night, you know? Uh, I just was kind of shocked, because I thought it was a fun time. Um, David Spade, I'm not the biggest David Spade fan, but I thought this was one of his better performances here. Uh, just shoot me he was great in there too and the snl uh, you know the weekend update and stuff like that but uh i don't know like i, I just saw the wrong missy on uh, netflix which i thought was actually really good but not because of him i feel like anybody could have been in that role uh, i was the lead actress who made that movie for me but i enjoyed that one a lot of people didn't but i thought it was a fun time but again mostly for her um but yeah so basically you know he's all grown up he's got the mullet going and uh you know whiskey tango and uh he's trying to find his parents because as a little kid he got separated from his parents when they went to uh uh you know uh like kind of like a cross country trip i believe and uh you know uh there it's just him growing up trying to find them again and he meets different people along the way uh you know christopher walken's in here uh britney daniel who's so absolutely stunning oh my gosh one of the most beautiful women probably ever in the world. <laughs> uh, but Kid Rock is here. I love Kid Rock's character. He's such a, like a douchebag character. He plays it perfectly. Uh, so good. Um, but yeah, I just remember it's just him all going along his way, meeting all the different people, and just showing how good of a person he is and how poorly he's treated along the way, his misadventures and things like that. Uh, but, you know, I think we went to the Grand Canyon is where they, uh, they lost him at as a kid. Uh, but you find out more about that too. There's a ton of recognizable people in here. And I just remember this one being a really fun time. I know a lot of people hate on it, but I dig it. And uh, happy to have that back in the collection now. Uh, next up is one that I remember having like mixed feelings on this one. Um, won two Academy Awards. Uh, Michael Caine won for uh, Best Supporting Actor and then Best Adapted uh, Screenplay from John Irving. But Cider House Rules um, cast in here. Uh, you've got Erica Badu, the singer. Uh, and then... You've got a Heavy D's in here, uh, Kieran Culkin, um, there's a bunch of Paul Rudd, Michael King, Delroy Lindo, a, um, Charlize Theron, Tobey Maguire, like so many recognizable people in here. Uh, I remember liking a lot about it, but also not, like there was something about the storyline, about the one, like I think it was Delroy Lindo and maybe Erica Badu's characters, uh, something that happens that he, you know, I don't know. I remember just like, I don't know, I don't like certain uh story arcs and storylines uh and that's the what happened with that just like uh you know I, I like the story of toby mcguire but i don't know there's some uplifting elements here and uh so i think he spent the majority of his uh life in like an orphanage and uh it's his rural maine and then he wants to explore the world and he goes and is working on uh say like an apple farm is that where uh, i believe that's what it was and then there's some family drama going on there and he also falls for Charlize Theron. I remember some really good performances there, but the storyline just, I don't know. If I can remember it correctly, it's something that makes my, my stomach turn. Uh, but I remember, you know, obviously uh, it did well Academy-wise, uh, but Tobey Maguire. Let me know your favorite Tobey Maguire movie. Ice Storm for me, Ang Lee. Um, but same thing with Michael Caine. He's been around for so long. So many amazing films. Charlize Theron, too. Very talented. A lot of talented people in that one. Next up, speaking of talented, I, that was totally unintentional. I had this in my hand. Didn't even realize it. Uh, talented Mr. Ripley, which was... Uh, there was also... There was an Indian movie called Nan. And then there's also uh, Purple Noon, which is like a French-Italian uh, movie. Uh, but this one right here... I remember seeing this uh, a while back now when it came out. And I definitely want to revisit it. it. Came out in 1999, but I remember really liking the performances here. Uh, Matt Damon, Gwyneth Paltrow, Jude Law, uh, and just 
Oh, Kate Blanchett's in here too. I feel like there's a couple other people. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, but yeah, I just remember really uh, Philip Baker Hall. A bunch of recognizable people. Very talented people. But the thing about this one is it had a great cast and also great performances. Uh, sometimes, again, you can have a great cast, but the performances don't drive the film enough, uh, as you would expect. Uh, so this one right here, though, uh, I remember really enjoying the performances in here. Uh, you know, it's a lot of happy moments going on, and then it takes kind of a darker turn. Uh, and I remember a lot of people, like, not understanding certain elements about this film. But uh, I remember just really enjoying it and definitely looking forward to revisiting that one. Next up is one um, I don't ever remember watching either. Probably another one I got from Blockbuster and I just never watched. Uh, it's We Don't Live Here Anymore. And the cast here is another one that was probably the driving force for me to pick this up. Mark Ruffalo, Laura Dern, uh, Peter Krause, and Naomi Watts. Uh, let me know your favorite Laura Dern movie, your favorite Mark Ruffalo movie, your favorite Naomi Watts movie, Peter Krause. Uh, not as big of a name as the others. Uh, but I guess it's essentially kind of like a tryst story. Uh, I think two of them are teachers and another two are uh, stay-at-home uh, moms, it says, and there's kind of an affair going on. Um, so, yeah, it's just the, the foursome kind of interlocked with the, the tryst going on there and, you know, different dramatic elements and how they play off of each other. And uh, I'm expecting some good performances here and uh, maybe some emotional honesty dealing with relationships and things like that. I remember uh, recently uh, reading a study, divorce rates, uh, and then also, uh, last time I remember hearing divorce rate was like 58%. That was before everything going on in the world. I think that's actually increased. A bunch of negative things have increased during this whole time. People being forced to stay together longer, which I don't know. I, I guess certain stresses can come out, but at the same time, maybe you should be thankful for spending that time together. And if you have issues spending time together for prolonged periods of time, there's an issue in your relationship already. But uh, and also there's a study where 80% uh, of someone in a marriage will cheat. 80%. Pfft. And that's probably, it's actually, that's probably lower than what it really is, uh, which just because, you know, it, you know, it's all about honesty and answering that, you know, it's anonymous and everything like that, uh, those studies, but some people probably still weren't honest with their answers, but 80%. And it's probably higher than that, but just blows my mind. So yeah, I, I'm always intrigued when it has, you know, uh, something that shows more realistic, unfortunately, sometimes, but also, you know, just dealing with that emotional honesty. Uh, life isn't perfect, uh, but you can still work on things and, uh, you know, improve yourself, improve your relationship, uh, things like that. Uh, I don't know all the dynamics of what happened in here. I don't know. But, uh, it's, you know, I'm looking forward to checking out for the cast. But let me know if you've seen any of these movies and what you think of them and which one of these is your favorite. Uh, the VHS, the Tron Legacy set. Uh, do you have any 3D Blu-rays? Do you have any cool special editions? Any things that, uh, you know, light up or, you know, have batteries or, you know, collector's sets with different display props and stuff like that? Do you have any VHS tapes? Do you collect VHS? There's a lot of people that still do, uh, kind of surprisingly so. Uh, if you look on Instagram, there's a huge VHS collector's uh, demographic on there. But if you, if you do collect VHS, let me know your favorite VHS tape in your collection is. Uh, there's some ones that are really rare and out of print. I just recently saw on uh, uh, eBay a uh, VHS tape for Halloween 2 sold for $31,000. <sighs> I also think it, it benefited like a, uh, a video rental store that was going out of business. I think it's something like to help them. Uh, I think it had something to do with that, but still that much money blows my mind. So now there's a, like a, just a rush of people selling their uh, Halloween VHS tapes. Um, but there you go. That's everything. Uh, leave those comments down below. Again, if you've seen them, what you think of them, all the questions I asked you too, who your uh, the favorite film that, you know, Robert Zemeckis directed, Penny Marshall directed, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then also too, you know, again, uh, with this one, it's surprising with uh, Brad Anderson. Let me know your favorite thing that he directed too. Uh, leave me those comments down below and I hope everybody's doing well. Take care. How's everyone doing? It's it's a catastrophe. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so it's a random bag of mystery video, and all these just burst open and split everywhere, this bag. Well, that sucked. <laughs>